Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back. And I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty. But we also just chit chat and keep each other company because why not, right? We just have a good time on this channel. So if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Hit the little subscribe button. I also have channel memberships. So if you wanted to join in, I consider that like a tip jar though. So it's just like giving me a tip if you enjoy my content. But anyway, we are doing a get ready with me video today, a chatty get ready with me video. I actually veered into topics that I didn't expect to veer into. I thought we were gonna talk about something totally different and we ended up just chatting about some nonsense. So if you wanna just kick back and chat with me while I apply this makeup. This is just a simple face because I wanna film a couple of videos. So I was just putting on a basic face with you guys and chatting. So if you wanna hang out with me, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right guys, so uh, we are doing it, okay? We are doing it. I am starting out as usual with a clean, freshly washed face. And when I mean freshly washed, I just got out of the shower. So freshly washed from head to toe, feeling fresh. And I had to force myself to start filming. Okay, here's the thing, okay? I have not filmed in about two weeks. I know, I said this kind of in my last get ready with me and it feels like a broken record at this point but seriously i have not filmed in about two weeks and it's because i'm tired <laughs> i just be tired i am not like really motivated to film which you know i go through these phases sometimes and i just have to force myself wait let me tilt the camera because i need to see into my mirror and uno need for see me lana god look at him See that now? See that I'm over here so? Yes, I can't see. One can't see me do, and me can't see me do. So, um, <laughs> I'm not really motivated to film, if I'm honest. I'm just tired. I'm working full time. You guys know this. And so, ooh, I put too much primer on, child. And so, when I do have free time, which would be the time that I film, I don't want to film. I just want to lay back listen to an audiobook, watch Netflix or something and just chill out, you know? It's been kind of non-stop these last couple of weeks between family events and like errands and just living life and enjoying myself. Whoo, it has been hectic so I haven't really had personal time so on the weekends it's always oh we have to go to this graduation party or oh we're doing this activity like i just went to this place whatever the hell the name of it is it's like extreme action park or something whatever it's like an indoor arcade so like dave and buster's vibes but there's also go-kart racing there's laser tag there's bowling and there's also like one of those overhead courses. You know those courses where you go through the different obstacles and stuff? So they have that going on. And we're trying to get together a little bit more because my nephew just graduated. So he is leaving for, uh, which part? Minnesota. Is Minnesota? One of them there is not Wisconsin, right? It's Minnesota. So it's Rochester, Minnesota, I think. Minnesota is the one that's by the Dakotas, right? Ask me if I know anything about the layout of this country. Child, as soon as I could drop geography in school, I did. And I never studied anything about the Americas because I grew up in Jamaica. So my schooling was centered around, come to think of it, my schooling was centered a lot around British history and like West Indian Caribbean history. So as soon as I could drop history too, I did because they were talking about like the British Empire and this foolishness. I was like, who want to hear about this foolishness? I don't want to. So I dropped them so fast. I was focused on the sciences <laughs> and um, what else did I do? Um, business. So I did sciences in high school. I'm like, 
I'm random right now. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna talk about whatever because really I just need to get ready Put some makeup on my face. I don't think I'm gonna do anything Extraordinary like nothing eye makeup related. I don't think I'm just gonna get ready do a little face because I want to film some more videos So I'm grabbing this make beauty hydroscape Moisturizing reverse emulsion. I've heard so much about this from Hannah Louise posting who has very dry skin and honestly <laughs> her recommendations I never take to heart because what she uses and what works for her skin will not work for me she's very pale she's very fair she has like a desaturated skin tone so like none of her color recommendations are obviously gonna work for me right in addition she has dry skin so anything that she recommends from a skincare perspective is not gonna work for me but here I am okay I just like make beauty products <laughs> so I was like I want to see what it's about oh I just spit so this is a whoo it's thick oh uh, my god so I really have been enjoying their moisturizer this is the succulent skin gel cream which if you have oily skin like me or if you have like combination skin that is what you should go for don't don't get this reverse emulsion thing unless you're gonna use it at night for like a really hydrating step because this ooh, it's milky though you saw the color of it it's like milk I love anything that's milky but this is way too greasy girl no my need for go wipe this off it is so greasy and awful lot of mercy I don't like it at all. Oh God. Whew. If you have dry skin, if you want a really hydrating kind of occlusive layer for your nighttime skincare, no matter what your skin type is, this is it. It feels like oil. It feels like a oil lotion. You know how this one is a gel cream? So it's like a light, watery feeling cream that kind of absorbs quickly. This is like the flip of that. It's like the opposite. This feels like a thicker lotion. Even though it looks thin, it was running down my hand just now. This feels thick on the skin. It kind of even feels a little bit like it could be glue. <laughs> like Elmer's glue. And it is definitely greasy. Oh my god. I feel like there's oil in it. Mm -mm. no girl girl you see when you're fast take fast I should have never purchased this again like I said Hannah liking this means I will not like it and I can use Hannah as that reference if it's something that she likes I automatically know that's not for me uh-uh <laughs> If it's a blush color that she likes, uh-uh, not for me. I think the only thing that we may have in common as far as preferences go, maybe lip colors. But other than that, no. And even her eyeshadow preferences, no. So I need to, <laughs> no, y'all. I feel like I need to wash my face and since my AC just kicked on, I'm going to actually go wash my face again. I don't like this feeling. Y'all, I am back. That was not fun. No, mm -mm. Woo, child, that was awful. I did not like that sensation at all. Like I said, if you're looking for like a really hydrating step that kind of feels oily and greasy, maybe that's for you, but baby, that is not for me. So I washed my face and I kind of washed around my brows so I wouldn't have to go back in with um, primer around my brows. Now let's go in with the actual gel moisturizer, which has been top of my list lately. I think a lot of it has to do with not only the product, right? So most of it is, of course, the product, but a lot of it has to do with the delivery system. It's a pump squeeze tube packaging, which is so convenient versus one of these little jars, you know? Which most of my gel creams come in these jars, and I love them, right? This one from Kiehl's, the Ultra Facial Oil-Free Gel Cream, love it right absolutely love it this one from Lancome it's the Hydra Zen anti-stress moisturizing gel cream also love this the plum plump hyaluronic cream love this as well all right 
they're a lot I'm, I'm bumping the camera I'm sorry but those are lightweight gel creams love them but I feel like having my moisturizer in a pump packaging is so much more convenient I don't have to open the jar unscrew it dip my finger in it's more hygienic it's more sanitary all that stuff right I prefer it that way so I think that's one of the reasons that I love this gel cream so much not that it performs any better than the other gel creams that I love you know what I mean so it's not like outperforming anything it's just the delivery mechanism affects how you appreciate products I also have this NARS skin light reflecting eye and lash gel so I purchased this a while back it's a lightweight gel cream as well you guys I love a lightweight gel cream all right and I'm just gonna apply this around my eyes I think I should just start using this come on like why am I not using this I purchased it I don't typically use a separate eye cream or anything but this is a really nice one it feels really comfortable and you can use it on your lashes and your lids so it's like an eye treatment a lot of moisturizers and serums and all that stuff will tell you don't apply to your eyelids don't apply too close to your eye and I'm like what's going on I want to and this one is like specifically saying hey put me on your eye put me on your lashes and I'm like all right I'm gonna put you on and it feels good it's not too emollient but it's not too what should I it's not too lightweight so it feels a little bit more hydrating than like a regular facial gel cream but at the same time it doesn't feel as dewy as the the situation here <laughs> from make beauty so oily skin stick to this this I don't know <laughs> Anna, what did you do to me? I'm gonna have to use it up though or give it away. I know who I'm gonna give it to. My aunt. My aunt has drier skin and she's older, so she probably needs that. She did ask me for some skincare. So, anyway, like I was saying, in high school, so high school in Jamaica and in the Caribbean and in Britain is a little bit different than it is here in America. It's a lot different. Let's be clear. It's a lot different. So, you know how in America you have pre-k which goes up to age six and then you have kindergarten that is six to what seven is it like an eight i don't know what kindergarten is right let me look it up because i'm i don't want to lie to you i want to know Ooh. <laughs> oh my god i just pulled up an only fans page y'all scandalo that was an only fans page i I'm not going to tell you all my business. <laughs> Listen, there was something that was being said about some kind of technique and I wanted to see what the technique was. So that's why that page was up. So that sound, <laughs> you want real? That's real. Anyway, let's see schools, school ages in the US. So from ages three to about five is preschool or pre-K, right? Here. And then from ages five to six is kindergarten. I always thought it was kindergarten. It's not garden, it's garden, okay? I don't know what it means, but kindergarten, right? Five to six. And then you go to elementary school, right? Up to age 11. So that is gonna be up to grade five, you go to elementary school. And then between ages 11 and 14, which is grade six, seven, and eight, that's middle school or junior high school. And then high school starts at grade nine. So you're 14 when you go to 14 or 15 when you go to high school and you graduate at 18, 17 or 18, right? So nine through 12 is high school or yeah, that's what it is, right? Something like that, whatever. In Jamaica, it was basic school, right? You can't go nursing school too <laughs> when you were really young, but you go to basic school or infant school, right? And that starts once you're potty trained and like walking and talking and doing all that, right? So that's around like two and a half. I went to basic school or infant school. I went to Spanish Town infant school when I was like two and a half going on three. And then at age six, you went to primary school. So it's basic, 
then primary and primary school started at six and you left primary school well back when I was growing up I'm gonna fill in my brows while I do this so back when I was growing up I left um, primary school at grade five there is a grade six in primary school but you can take the common entrance which I know they've changed I don't know what the actual testing is right now I think it may be GSAT now something something academic test I don't know anyway it's like an entry exam for high school so all the primary school students like sit this exam on the same day it's like that's the test day right everything's kind of centered around that every year and it's done across the Caribbean or it used to be I don't know if it's set across the Caribbean anymore but it was a general test and it would decide what high school you went to right so you didn't just automatically get placed in a high school you had to do the test and then they placed you right so you do that test in grade five and then if you don't pass the test so they're like passing levels if you don't pass the test you go to grade six and you retake it in grade six right and then you go to high school so high school technically starts at grade seven and it runs through grade ten right which is fifth form we call them forms first form second form through the fifth but here I know it's grade seven through ten right so that's how that whole thing is set up in Jamaica and then after high school which you graduate at grade 10 so you graduate at 16 right 15 or 16 you actually graduate high school you can then go to sixth form which is now grades 11 and 12 where you do more advanced classes and you can get college credit for those classes too which I actually did get some college credit for those classes. So there are two additional years after high school that you can do, but you can also go to college, not college, community college, or like the in-between where you get, um, what is it called, your associate's degree, right? So those two years is kind of like getting your associates. So that's how the structure is. I know I didn't really go into detail, you're probably more confused now, but the point is the structure of the high school system or the school system in the Caribbean is different than it is here in the US and I'm still trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Anyway, what me that say? So in high school, so seventh and eighth grade, you, which is first form and second form, you kind of do all the basic classes. So English, math, history, geography, blah, 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 blah. And then in third form, you get to choose your subjects now. So before it was just a general blanket, everybody does these classes. And then in third form, you get to choose like, what do you want to major in, right? And you could select, I think at that time you could select up to nine subjects. Now I know you can do more if your teachers approve it, right? At that point I chose nine subjects, but you were able to choose like eight. So not everybody did nine subjects. The maximum we were allowed to do was nine. So I went for nine because of course, right? And girl, as soon as I could drop anything related to history or geography, please, bye not doing that no more nope i did principles of business which is like economics and i did accounting i did computer science physics chemistry ad maths which is additional mathematics which is really calculus right it's like calc one and two so that's ad maths and what else am i do I don't even remember. Oh, you had to do English and literature. So English A and B. And you also had to do, of course, regular math. So I had, let me count them off now. English A, English B, which is lit. Math, which is regular math. Add maths, which is additional maths. Physics, chemistry, POB, POA, and computer science. So those were my nine subjects, all right? But... I hated history. I hated history so much. I think history was the only class that I was close to failing in college. Cause I wasn't interested. Like you had to do a history class as one of your electives and I hated it. I hated it so much I didn't go to class. I hated it. Like I don't mind learning about history 
and doing it on my own terms but if you want me to be in a school setting learning no i don't want to do it so <laughs> i dropped that so fast and then because jamaica is religious pfft, huh if you believe that but it they're dominated by religion and i feel like a lot of countries are like what is that about like where are we going to get that separation of church and state anyway the country's dominated by religion in fact jamaica if you didn't know this has the most churches per capita of the entire world okay there are more churches than any other place in the world right and them corrupt so boy, i'm gonna tell you but they're really big on religion and they had we had to take what was it called for us it was called religious studies right re you see, as fast as me, could I drop that? Ma drop it. Ma drop it. What me a study Bible for? Hello, talk about indoctrination. You not indoctrinate me, okay? No. Church and me, no. And most most Jamaicans are religious. Like, we grew up with it. It was one of the main things you did on Sundays. Like, it's embedded in the culture, like the whole thing, right? Listen to me, me, no, organized religion, I don't believe in it, I don't subscribe to it, I'm not gonna participate, so, and that was since childhood, like, you reading these stories in the Bible to me, and I'm not knocking anybody that believes, like, believe what you wanna believe, my best friend is a believer, <laughs> and we just don't talk about religion, she's like, yeah, Tina, I know you don't believe this stuff, I'm like, but I don't mind hearing about it, like, you can tell, I grew up with it, it's not like, I'm opposed to hearing about it, I just don't believe it, and I don't subscribe to what you subscribe to and that's fine i still believe in energy and there's something greater than me right the way it's written in a book by men that i'm supposed to follow and it's full of so much misogyny no i don't want it i don't want it so i'm gonna participate anyway so as soon as i could drop re you better believe i dropped all those nonsense subjects we also had like food and nutrition which <laughs> lord have mercy talk about misogyny so i went to an all-girls school so we had to do home economics how to take care of a home <laughs> problematic right home ec which was one of the things okay they were teaching us how to make beds and like do a table spread the correct placements of utensils and these things are useful for the most part it's not that they're not useful but the fact that that's what they were teaching in an all-girls school like and those were our choices right then you had to do food and nutrition which is where you were learned about food and you did cooking right i didn't mind that either because i got to cook and learn about food food groups like the breakdown of proteins all that stuff so fine okay <laughs> it wasn't too bad i wouldn't mind learning that for a couple of years it's fine it was fine okay right? And you could choose it. I think you had to do each one of these electives um, one per semester, right? The other one that we had was, um, I forget, textiles? Clothing and textiles. Where you have to go learn for sore. <laughs> no, like legit. You had to do embroidery. You had to like, one of the projects was to make a cushion, right? So you had to like, Use the pattern, cut out the cushion pattern, like stitch it up. You learn to use a sewing machine, like the whole thing. And you had to learn embroidery stitches, like cross stitch and what the other stitch them name? Ring stitch. <laughs> Not stitch, all the stitch. We don't even know how to stitch them. See that? Some good that did for me. But I can sew. Like I can sew. I can sew if I need to. I can hem something. Like I learned it, right? But why were we learning these in an all-girls school like are you kidding me and then the equivalent for the boys school so i had a boys school equivalent so it was wilma's um high school for girls then we had wilma's high school for boys right next door and they had td which was technical join right so them could i learn technical join like architecture basics of architecture and then they also had woodwork i believe woodwork and then they had um i think it was mechanic so they could work on cars and stuff so i just put on nars concealer under my brows and then my mac paint pot how are my brows looking do they look uneven this one is always wonky 
<sighs> I have just accepted that my brows will not be even. Because of my eye shape too, like this one is more open, this one's more hooded. You learn that your face isn't symmetrical as you film yourself daily. Well, not daily, but I used to film myself daily. Now let's go in with the primer on my face. This is the L'Oreal Paris Prime Lab 24 hour matte setter. My AC is going off. I'm sorry about that sound in the background because I know you hear it because I hear it when I'm editing. So this primer, Oh wow, listen, if you have oily skin, if you're looking for oil control, I know we're in the middle of summer now, well we're not in the middle of summer, but summer is upon us. We have officially, is it official? When is it officially summer? Anyway, we're in June, so summertime. Memorial Day to me marks the start of summer. If you need oil control, get this. Get this now, now. Oh my god, I did not, I did not expect, anticipate, I did not have high hopes. I was like, whatever, it's just a primer. Mattifying, it holds the oils in place, girl. So you know how I, I, <laughs> I have oily skin. So I need that mattification in this is excellent excellent for that so now that we have all that going on i'm gonna let this primer sit for a little bit let me grab my blur eyeshadow from melt cosmetics this is a refer 36 brush i love this it's like a little paw brush that's what i call it because it has a little angle you see it and it's really really soft it's really soft and it's large so it can cover a wide space I can just sweep it across my lid so if you do one and done eyeshadow looks a lot this is a great brush to pick up and it's a natural hair brush very soft oh my god so soft and delicate and if you know me then you know I know a soft brush okay I am a food a lover which are natural hair brushes made in Japan I love them they are comfortable on the eyes they're really nice to apply eyeshadow because they're not scratchy okay and they pick up eyeshadow really well so that's what i'm putting on my eyes you know what i'm gonna do a little eyeshadow i'm gonna grab this eyeshadow palette from sigma it's the ambiance palette it's in this gold packaging and these are the shades so there are seven shades am i counting that right and we have alternating matte shimmer matte shimmer so three shimmers four mattes and they're neutral shades but they lean a little bit more on the golden side so let's use those so um yeah as soon as i could drop those subjects i did so anyway what's going on with you guys so like i was saying i had to motivate myself to get up get up and get to filming because i have not filmed in a while and i need to film because guess what I'm going on vacation next week so I'm gonna be out so I need content for you guys before you send out the search party I'm gonna go in with days which is the light ivory shade I need to create content you guys are gonna send out the search party like where is Tina why hasn't she uploaded in a week and yeah so that's what I'm trying to do today because the plan is to leave tomorrow I don't know where I'm going <laughs> I don't know where I'm going I don't know the plans I'm not planning the trip I'm a Capricorn so you know I like organization and planning but I'm letting it go I'm letting go of control and letting someone else plan the trip not my zoo me not make it into my monkey so I'm gonna leave it alone I'm gonna leave it alone and it's taken everything out of me not to go off the hinges like for real like to freak out but you know what I left people to them thing like do your thing then because don't involve me don't call me don't ask me for nothing and they've been trying to get me to help no you you plan it because you asked for it let's go in with this shade now which is day lily it is a deeper like tan shade and i'm gonna buff that in the crease i got this new brush from sephora it's a number 57 it's a synthetic kind of a flat dome brush it reminds me of the real techniques deluxe crease brush which is this one this needs to be washed it's larger than that brush it has a similar shape and then the bristles are also synthetic it's just larger 
and this brush will allow control because it is dense so it's tightly packed so it's dense it's going to allow for control and buffing and all that it will allow you to lay down color but also blend mm -hmm. ah, you guys remember when there used to be informative videos on youtube and tutorials and like back to the basics i did like a basics video for blending brushes and i spoke about like how different shapes will affect how you apply eyeshadows like the shapes the density the length of bristles all that and i love doing that video but nowadays if you do a video like that it won't get as many views i mean my channel doesn't get as many views but I had one video pop off recently. I wasn't making videos, right? So I expect my AdSense to like tank because if you're not getting views, then you're not gonna have AdSense. I'm going in with the lighter shade under my brow as well. So I thought my AdSense would tank. No, I have one video, which is my declutter video from last year. It was an end of year declutter. That video, for whatever reason, has hit the algorithm and it's getting like tons of views like it skyrocketed i was like whoa 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 let's go in with oasis now which is this deeper shade so you never know when videos are gonna hit the algorithm and like take off so that video has kind of been <laughs> floating the channel for or floating my adsense not even the channel but floating my adsense for the last month and i'm happy for that <laughs> because i really thought i was gonna make like two dollars this month but no doing okay these shadows are actually applying pretty decently i am surprised this is my first time trying a sigma eyeshadow palette so yeah so yeah i have to motivate myself i'm going on a trip said that already i have to film so hence the braids right i had to motivate myself to film so i took a shower you know that's my first thing and <laughs> every time i'm in the shower i'm thinking to myself i can't believe people don't like shower like every jamaican probably thinks that lord people really don't like shower because i'm in the shower and i feel so refreshed i feel rejuvenated like when in doubt i'm gonna shower like anytime i'm feeling any kind of way i'm going to shower if i feel sticky i'm going to shower if i feel tired i'm going to shower if i feel like huh, i'm going to shower if i want to get pumped up i'm going to shower and i'm in the shower like people really not like beard i don't understand i don't understand <laughs> and i have this conversation in the shower all the time let's go into the deeper shade now i'm not even using any of the shimmers just the mattes and there's a gradient from light to deep. Now I'm going in with a BK Beauty number 202. This is a fluffy blending brush. Notice how this one has longer bristles, right? It has like a tapered bottom and then it flares out a little bit and it's a little bit floppier. So what this will do is deposit color, right? You can use the top of it. So you see how I'm laying down the color? So it will deposit the color, but because it has like a fatter top, you can then press it down and go back and forth and it will blend because it has, let me show you. So the anatomy of the shape, thin base, right? So it's pinched and then the bristles kind of flare out at the sides and then it tapers to a smaller point, all right? So at the top, when you put color here and you angle it directly on your skin, so you push this part directly on your skin, it's gonna deposit color. But as you press, the sides here will help to blend and fade out that color. And then if you lean it a little bit like to the side, so you tilt it a little bit, that's gonna help to blend. So when you do this, look, so doing this deposits color so I can get the concentrated color because of that little top. And then when I do this and lean it to the side and go like that, it's going to blend. You see? Yeah. So that's how brushes work. <laughs> a little, a little scientific, little detail there. You probably do the motion and you don't even know why you're doing it or why the brush works like that. But that's the thought that goes into the creation of brushes. Like why are they shaped the way they're shaped? Why are the bristles the length they are? And so on. So those are things that go into brush design i know right i know so let me just blend that out so i mean i said oh so in the show and i'm like people really not like beard because it's always this hygiene discussion on twitter and it came up today people are like what's your hot take like hygiene thing right and somebody was like well if you don't shower 
after you shower and towel dry, then you're messy and you're you're not you're nasty because you need to get the towel funk off of you. And I thought that was so hilarious because of course they were being facetious, right? Because it's like such a debate about hygiene. Here's my thing. I don't care if you choose to not bathe. That's your problem. But stay away from people. And stay away from where people are in confined areas with you, okay? If you want to stay home and be in your funk, that's fine. Every man for themselves. Like, if that's what you want to do, do you. Like, not my zoo, not my monkey. But just sit a minute, you go outside, and you're going to be in the locality, okay? If you're going to be around other people, and you just unwashed and funky, therein lies a problem. Please go beard. Please go and bathe yourself, please. Let me go in with my best skin ever from Sephora. I haven't used this in a little while and it's one of my favorite foundations. Go and bathe because now you're in public and you stink, you stink. And for those people who are like, oh, I don't really sweat a lot. I don't really have body odor. Yes, you do. I don't know who you think you are or why you feel like you're that special. Sure, there are people who don't stink as quickly as others. Like, I will stink quick. I'm funky quickly. <laughs> Girl, I will funk up the place real quick. Like my underarms, whoo, it's not really anything else, right? But my underarms, I sweat, I sweat, and the funk will happen. So I shower two, three times a day, especially when it's hot, because once the arm gets to going, <laughs> sweaty. And people that are like, oh, well, I don't get funky. Okay, you may not get funky at hour four or five if you're like you know but you're getting funky okay if you go a whole day without showering um, even if you're doing minimal activity you're still funky don't play with me do not play with me you have an odor even if it's a natural odor it's still an odor you smell <laughs> you smell and just because you're used to it doesn't mean I am used to it doesn't mean I should be subjected to your funk so go beat yourself go and bait yourself and for people who are like, oh, well, that's ableist of you to say. Stop trying to find things to be offended about. Obviously, like, I don't know why I need a disclaimer. Obviously, this is not geared towards people who have a legitimate reason, like a health reason, a mental reason for why they're not showering, okay? We're not talking about people with disabilities, well, whether that's physical or mental, where they're not showering. I'm talking about able-bodied people with resources, so you have access and resources, so we're not talking about people that are without a home. I'm talking about people that have access, okay? That are able and still out here choosing to be funky. Like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Don't do that, don't do that. And then have the nerve to be like, well, I only shower once a week. If you only shower once a week, make sure you stay a yard. And make sure you only go outside when you shower because I don't understand. You're fucking up the place. You stink and you're around people. Like staying home, whatever, do what you do. I hear a place, right? But when you go out now and I interact with the public, please, please. Go beard. And not only bathe, put on some deodorant, please. Put on some deodorant. Because I know people who dear all them beard, but them not put on deodorant. All them beard, but for them version of beard, your version of showering is water running over your body. Stop it! And then people that are like, oh, well, I was in the pool all day, so that's a shower. So you don't want to wash off the chlorine off of your body, all the chemicals in the pool, people's pee, like... Y'all know that the water in a pool is not changed, right? You do know that. They just pour chemicals in it to kill the algae, right? So it doesn't turn green. You know that, right? To kill the bacteria and stuff. So you have people dead skin cells, people's pee, people's like bodily things because areas are oozing <laughs> it sounds bad but no like bodily fluids are in that water and it's simply a matter of throwing some chlorine and some other chemicals in the water so it still look blue but the water isn't changed and you don't want to wash that off of yourself before you go into your bed you're just all day outside and you don't feel like you need for me oh god mm -mm. 
and then you don't when you're being you don't hit the hot spots and wash your feet and stuff what is going on i am judging i am judging i will tell you right now i'm judging you i'm judging you because you're funky <laughs> oh my god and then i'm on twitter right so i'm on twitter and twitter is just my it's very entertaining okay i know a lot of people say twitter is toxic and it can be but I find it so entertaining because I don't engage, right? You're not going to find me on Twitter arguing with nobody. Where where do you guys find the time? You don't have nothing to do? You don't have anything on your agenda to do? <laughs> like, aren't you tired? You could take a nap. Like, why are you arguing with, with people on the internet? Like, why? What do I look like? Like, mm. you know what? That Urban Decay concealer, this new one, went name the Quickie. It's actually a good concealer and I I shouldn't say that it's surprising because I I do expect a lot from Urban Decay complexion products Urban Decay's complexion products because I've always had a great time with their foundations as long as they're not the dewy kind but their foundations and their concealers I've always enjoyed I mean their powder was one of my favorites for years even their concealer, like, don't play with me. I love Urban Decay's complexion products. So, this didn't surprise me that it's amazing. So, I do love that. But, yeah, like, I don't understand, like, go beard. And then you're going to say, oh, your kids. Oh, I'm bumping the camera a lot because it's right here. The point is, okay, that's not the point. You just not going to wash your kids, especially like your little girls you need to wash out our chum chum <laughs> wash out all the netters wash out the areas man you can't just have the chlorine sit on in it no and you need to wash out the chlorine out you here like the whole thing i got a new shade of the one size powder so one size release new shade so there's a pink shade i do believe and this shade, which is Sweet Honey. So this is, so I have the translucent, which I love. The medium deep is a little bit too rich for my skin tone. It's a little dark. I was surprised by how rich that shade actually is. So I usually set my foundation with it. If I use it on its own, it's fine. But if I set my foundation, it darkens up my foundation. This is the first time I'm using this. So you have to peel off the plastic. And then the cutout, it's a sifter cutout and it's in the logo of one size let me see if you can see it you see that so it has a little slit and then the look it's cute right but then you have this lid that seals it in so you know how loose powder gets all over the place so yeah like i don't get it <laughs> okay so every time i'm in the shower i'm like what are you doing what are you doing and then to hear how people shower is just it's funny to me and then you hear people talk about moisturizing right so <laughs> on the um the charleston trip that we went on and i know i keep talking about it but that trip was so fun and we had such a good time it's just it's always gonna come up like it was the trip of a lifetime it will always be in my memories but on that trip i was having conversations and I'm probably not gonna mention who I was having a conversation with, but we were talking about, you know, showering and how black people do like a double cleanse. And it really didn't occur to me that it was a double cleanse. Like I didn't think that people shower differently, but apparently they do, right? You just take it for granted that everybody showers the way you do. Mm -mm. We learned that people aren't washing their legs, right? This powder I can use all over now instead of just under the eyes, which I appreciate. This is another BK Beauty brush. This is the 105. I will link these brushes down below. Those will be affiliate links. So I don't have an affiliate code, but they're discount codes that float around. But I do have affiliate links. So you can use my links and I will get credit, right? So anyway, um, we were having the discussion... And I was mentioning that on Twitter, I saw this, this TikTok about somebody, white girl, talking about double cleansing and like, oh my God. And all the black people are like, that's just showering. What do you mean double cleansing? So it's like body slugging where you put lotion on. Somebody discovered this. And it's like, it's not a discovery. It's like, y'all are Christopher Columbus of TikTok. Because I don't understand. Christina and Christopher Columbus is over there. Because... 
these are not discoveries like we've been doing this like i've been lotion in my skin it's not slugging yeah your skin looks hydrated and moisturized at the end because it is like your skin will look glowy when you moisturize like duh it's not slugging una na put on lotion come to find out una don't put on lotion and then come to find out as well like i said this double cleanse and i'm like isn't that just how you shower come to find out no it is not so double <laughs> Double cleansing is where you're cleansing multiple times, just like double cleansing your face, right? The skin, no, oh, it's giving. Let me put on a mascara while I'm telling you this. So, <laughs> double cleansing is just washing multiple times in the shower. It's not just one and done, right? So, you know how you do, you have makeup on, sunscreen, skincare, whatever. So, you do like an oil cleanser or a cleansing balm, a makeup remover, micellar water, whatever, to take off the makeup. And then you use a cleanser, right? A traditional cleanser to then wash your face. That's considered double cleansing, right? For, um, for makeup, for like your face. But for your body, so here's what I do in the shower. <laughs> and there was a, a, another TikTok video going around where this girl was sharing her shower routine. And she was just, she had layers and layers of products that I was like, girl. Now, we then know you ain't doing that every time you shower. And I don't think it was meant to say that that's what she does every time she showers. Because she was exfoliating and shaving. And I don't shave every time. And I don't exfoliate every time. But I do that at times. So my shower routine may be longer one or two days out of the week, right? But it's not going to be each and every time I shower. But, yeah, so... She was going through the, okay, she does the first cleanse, right? Which is to just remove, like, the first layer of funk, right? And then she does, like, a second cleanse to, like, deep clean. She scrubs and she shaves. And then she does the, um, the moisturizer in the shower, like, the body conditioner. And whatever, right? Okay, cool, cute, cute. I do a few steps of that, you know, depending on what I'm doing, but my steps are at minimum like a, a double cleanse but it's not really double cleansing so what i do okay i start out with a body wash right it will be a, like a full foaming body wash and i don't go ultra luxurious with body washes listen okay sometimes i do but not all the time my favorite body wash right now is the dove the dove men's body wash okay and it's the blue one which is cool comfort that's what I use, that's my body wash, okay? Because it's fresh, it's light, it's foamy, it gives me rich lather, it's cozy, right? And I use a washcloth, okay? Here's the other thing y'all don't do, like why why y'all not using a washcloth? What's, what's going on? What's going on? Europeans don't use a washcloth because when you go to their hotels, there are no washcloths, so I actually travel with a washcloth. I don't go anywhere without my washcloth, okay? So I travel with my washcloth. Plus, I don't want to use a washcloth at the hotel that everybody else is using, right? So I bring my washcloth. Come, I'm a washcloth, and I'm a, you know? And you buy the packs of washcloths. They're at Walmart or Target. They're not that expensive. Buy your washcloth, them, and they use them. You wash them in the washing machine like every week or so or every few days and you rotate it and when it wear out because it will get threadbare right it will really work if you're doing it right you will work it down to like really thin and then you replace it right and then you use that washcloth as a cleaning cloth for your, your place <laughs> like that's the that's the cycle of life right so washcloth um body wash right you leather up nice right so the first thing you do is get really get everything wet under the shower wet up wet up from head to toe just like if you're washing your hair you completely um soak your hair before you put the shampoo in right so you wet up yourself wet up your body rinse off that first layer with just water right but that is not really a step it's just getting wet right then you lather up your washcloth with the the body wash my dove right rich lather and you got in right and you wash wash up the neck wash behind the ears like get up and don't just wash here so you know you have to come around here so to wash around here so to, you know because there's some greasy places that can occur right so get in the crease and you wash right and you wash the ears like <laughs> you're washing 
You ever shower a kid yet? Listen, when I don't scrub my niece and nephew, okay, them clean and fresh. So you wash, right? And you're washing all the parts and you're getting everything, right? You get it all off. And the washcloth is also going to help with the exfoliation part of it, right? So you wash and you go on and you do your thing. You wash the whole thing, right? The whole of you, however, wash under your arm, your, your areas. You properly wash the areas, right? Peel back anything that needs to peel back. Wash the little man in the boat. Like, go get... <laughs> I'm like, get in there, okay? Get in the creases and the cracks, right? Wash. Wash the legs. Don't just let soap run down. Like, scrub them with the rag, right? <laughs> Washcloth. We call the rag in Jamaica. Wash up the things. Wash between the toes. Like, aren't you doing this? Like, that's the first step, right? So, now you rinse off, right? I don't have to fully even rinse off, you know. But you rinse off. Mostly you rinse off everything, right? Then, you grab your bar soap. Whatever bar soap you choose, I also use, uh, is it Dove? Yeah, because Dove bar soaps are a little bit more moisturizing. I think it's also, no, it's a lie. That's a lie. I have an Iris Spring one right now. Iris Spring, and then I also like Coast. Or I will use, what's the, um, the antibacterial dial. Right, so you get, get one of them bar soap there, right? I need to do another lather with the washcloth, right? And now you're going to really concentrate this on the hot spots, all right? So, hit up the pocket, you know, hit up the butt, hit up the underarms, like really scrub, scrub at the neck, the ears, like hit them hot spots. If you got the titties and you know you need to get into the titty area, get into the titty area, right? Belly button, between the toes, like that's where you get in the hot spots. So you don't have to necessarily soap everything up again, but like get your hot spots, the key areas that you know get greasy and creasy, right? Get up in there. Get up in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then you rinse, that's your double cleanse. But then I also go in, so I guess I triple cleanse. But this third step is not really like a big deal. This is where I want to smell a certain way. So I get my scented product. And in this case, I've been using another um, another bar soap. I've been using one from Old Whaling Company. I discovered them in Charlotte, actually, North Carolina. They were at the market that I went to, but this one is a bar soap. I don't usually use a bar soap like for that third step. It would be another body wash, but this one would be like a moisturizing body wash, right? So then with that third step, which is your scented or your moisturizing step, this one's quick. Quick lather, quick lather, and just a quick wash. You don't have to like scrub. You're just scenting your skin right now or moisturizing your skin. So you're getting a hydrating body wash. You can also use one of those in-shower moisturizers. Any one of those. Whatever, get a scented body wash. It don't matter. But the, the ones from Dove that have the lotion in them, those are really moisturizing. So... Now you're gonna do just a quick once over with that. Again, you don't have to get too intense with that. Just to give yourself that really fresh scent and maybe moisturize. Like I said, I'm using the old Whalen Company. I'll link it down below because it's it's good. I like it. I've been using that. I use the Ocean Swept, but they have various scents that are really nice. They're very fresh. They smell really nice. And I've been I've always been told that I smell nice. So oh no, I got a smudgy smudge whatever um so that's my last step is just to get that scent and like i said that one is quick and my showers don't take that long which is the other thing i don't understand people are like showers take too much time and i'm like it's literally with all my stuff that i'm doing 10 to 15 minutes max right i can shower and be done in 10 minutes the longest time that i take in the shower is when i'm shaving so the shaving step is a little bit more nuanced so i do all that and then if i'm shaving i will do the exfoliating step so that's where i have a body scrub and i also have like a shower mitt you know the ones that you put on your hands and it has the scrubbies and you scrub your skin so i will scrub my legs right to exfoliate the dead skin. Now my washcloth is doing a lot of that already, 
but I do that extra step when I am my eyes are watery for some reason that's fine leave it alone you know what you said leave it alone so I will go in with the exfoliating step before I shave my legs so after the shower after I'm done the exfoliating step and I'll even exfoliate my butt and my elbow so I'll do just like a body exfoliation I'll exfoliate everywhere since I'm already doing it I'll just exfoliate everywhere and then I'll shave my legs right and then rinse and go but yeah the scented step and then you're done you're done and then after that lotion lotion your body and people on this trip were like double cleanse like they do one and done they don't even use a washcloth they use their hand just straight on and i'm like where you gonna clean my girl your aunt is not cleaning like you think it is it can do a little cleaning i'm not saying it's not but that is not enough and then but not lie, the people them who say them don't shower and don't use washcloth and them don't use lotion, you can tell. All tea, all shade. <laughs> and it's not being shady in like a disrespectful way, but it's a little shady because I can tell that you don't use lotion. I can tell that you don't double cleanse. I can tell that you don't take care of the skin on your body. It shows your skin looks dull and dry. And again, it's like, I'm not knocking you. I'm just saying like, it, it's apparent. And then you're like, oh, I have dry skin. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> it, it's evident, it's evident. And you know, you might smell fine. You might smell fine, at least you're showering, right? You may not be double cleansing, but at least you're showering. So I'm gonna give you that, at least, at the bare minimum. But I can tell that you're not the freshest. Your skin looks dull. A little exfoliating with a washcloth will do wonders for you. You should probably, probably try to look into that. <laughs> I'm just saying. And then lotion. And people are like, oh, I don't like lotion in because it feels greasy. Okay, I have new blushes. I'm gonna try this one from Giorgio Armani. It's really Armani Beauty, but it's still the G. I don't know why they, whatever. It's just shade 51, which is a really pale pink, but I'm gonna try this one. I have a, another shade, but I wanted to try this one to see if this pale pink will show up. This brush is from Smashbox. It is the Blur and Foundation brush, but you see how, yeah, it has that shape. This pink not show up. So that pink, it's cute, like it gives a little subtle hint. Where the other blush? Where is the other one? It gives a little something, but it's not a lot. And that's fine. You know, sometimes you just want a kiss of color. And then I have this new shade, is 40. All right, so this one is more on the berry side, or like the red rosy side, I should say, like it's rosy. A little bit like a watermelon? Would you say? A little raspberry watermelon -y. Cute. This is the color. Yeah, this is for me. The other one then. So this one, 51, can probably go back. Because that's light. You know, I'm going to minus it out. And the formula of these, oh, they're so smooth. And they actually stick to my skin. And they show up. And they last. So. Right? So. The lotion thing now, the excuse is they don't like the feel of lotion on their skin because it feels slimy and I'm like, so you'd rather feel like a dry crocus bag, right? <laughs> like a straight crocodile, dry, because you're not complaining say you have dry skin, but you'd rather feel like that than put some lotion on and get accustomed to the feeling. It, it might take time for you to get used to the feeling of moisturized skin <laughs> if you don't moisturize. And I know sometimes I don't moisturize out the shower if I don't feel dry. Like if I feel fine, I won't necessarily go in with a lotion. But if I'm going outside, one thing about black people is we don't want to feel ashy. So we're going to lotion and you're not going to see me out here looking ashy, looking crazy. But the moisturizer that I use, let me grab it, to get away from that greasy feeling is just like I use on my face, right? It's a gel cream. This is the hand cream from Neutrogena. It's the Hydro Boost. They have the body lotion to this, all right? I just picked this up because it's right there on my desk. Go to this line in Target. Pick up the hand lotion and the body lotion. Jergens also, is Jergens? Yeah, Jergens also has, is it Jergens? Let me go look, hold on. Let me teach you all the way because since I already brought it up. 
So here is the, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Lotion. Very lightweight. Gel cream. Absorbs really quickly. It looks light blue. And it smells fresh and light. Really great scent. You want to smell fresh and light? Use the lotion. Use it. Why are you over here wanting to be ashy? Don't do that. And then you can't complain about... Because I just came out the shower. I didn't lotion. So you can't complain about feeling greasy like I did with that first reverse emulsion awful right you can't complain about feeling greasy because this absorbs really quickly into the skin it doesn't have a greasy residue it's lightweight it smells good like you know what smell good and fresh and go out road I met people say a lot of smell nice and you say oh, it smell nice right and then the Jergens one that I was saying. This is the cloud cream. I had it upside down because I'm trying to use up the rest of it. But down to there. So, so the cloud cream also like a similar consistency. A similar light fresh scent. Very nice light fresh scent. This one really lightweight. Now if you're really dry. And you need something a little bit more hydrating. And you don't have to use this all over. Right? Grab the Eucerin. Okay, intensive repair lotion. This is for very dry, flaky skin. I use this on my elbows because I can get a little bit. La, look at the elbows there. So I can use this on my elbows and then also on my heels, right? Where it's more, you know, it's drier. Use that there. Or get the Nivea. The Nivea oil in lotion. Whoo! I use that for years. I still have a bottle. I should have brought it, but I didn't. And I'm not going back in there in the bathroom because my camera. Oh. Right? Ooh, ooh, the gas chat. <laughs> that is so terrible. But yeah, like don't give me the excuse about lotions not feeling good. You can find ones that feel good. And you just have to adjust. Like anything else, you can adjust and get used to it. I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. Give myself some color here and some, you know, some dimension use the proper lotion like use the things that are available you have so much available to you now there's no excuse i don't want to hear it okay you don't know have to be out here smelling a hot mess looking a hot mess looking ashy and think you're cute just because you have fair skin or you're light don't mean we can't see the ash on your skin i know you're ashy i see it i know <laughs> i know you're ashy okay i see it on you let me go in with this lip balm from Summer Fridays. This shade is ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo, cherry. So these lip balms, oh god, I love these so much. These are so good. And they have a little color to them. The shades that I have are vanilla beige, which is like my go-to. It's a like a neutral color. It's very thin, very light. And then this one is brown sugar this one gives a little bit more of a brown tint to my lips but I love it it gives me almost like the natural color of my top lip right there love these so much and they're easy to apply because they're in these squeeze tubes right they're thin they're not sticky and they look nice and juicy on the lips and they also hydrate the lips right so no excuses I don't know how I got on this topic. I really didn't think I was going to get into it, but... Alright, I had to take a break real quick, but I am back. And since I was on my break, I put my lotions back, but I grabbed the Nivea one. So this is the Nivea Essentially Rich. The one that says, with deep nourishing serum and almond oil. This one, if you want the glow on your skin, it's a little heavy, it's a little greasier, but if you want your legs to shine, yes! You don't have to add oil or like any shimmery product, you just put that on and you're glowy, right? Your skin looks, you look youthful and you look hydrated, okay? So this conversation went all over the place. I actually wanted to talk more about my braids and the braid situation and also like about random stuff. <laughs> and I didn't end up doing that. I'm putting on this lip gloss well it's not a lip gloss what is it called makeup by mario what are they calling it the moisture glow plumping lip color this is poppy it's the red one i had to get this one i love these lip glosses so much have you guys tried that yet so i really want to film lip swatch videos 
Ooh. The lip balm was doing it, but I reached over, I was packing stuff up, and I saw this color and I wanted to try it, which is really why I'm putting it on, but. Makeup by Mario! Cause these feel like liquid lip glosses or like lip oils, but they're plumping. Like a lip balm, like a melted lip balm too. But the color, anyway. I really wanted to talk about my braids because I'm going on vacation. That's where I was segueing into until we got into the shower conversation. So I'm going to save. Should I do like, I'm thinking maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do a uh, what's grinding my gears video just talking about my braiding experience because I finally found someone to braid my hair that I will be a loyal customer to, okay? So I found her online, so I went on Instagram, searched for like my location and like local braiders, and she popped up and I was like, I'm done, this is it, I'm gonna choose her. And I love it, so here it is, let me show you because I'm going on vacation, right? My nails are done too, so here are my nails. These are press-ons, and what I do when I go on vacation is bring an extra set, so I'll bring a box of these nails with me, so if they pop off, I can always just pop one on from the new box. So, here's my hair, alright? So, it's mid, yeah, it's like butt length, right? It's butt length, there was no extra charge for the length, I provided the hair again, there was no extra charge for the length, it was done really well, right? And... I love it and I was saying to her I'm like you spent so long in my hair like wow she's like I don't mind I'm like wow what so just like her overall demeanor I'm definitely going to her again and again and I recommended her to my sister-in-law like it's neat she didn't use a ton of edge control or product in my hair so there's not a ton of buildup she did put some like on my baby hairs but when I wash my face, I can just wash that out, so it's not a big deal. But, like, it's not a ton of, like, cakey edge control. Like, she didn't rely on the edge control to braid my hair. I love it, but I'll do a little rant about the last braider that I went to that was just nasty. And I considered whether or not I should put her on blast, but she was nasty. And I'm going to speak about it, because I don't care. <laughs> like customer service like where is it like these braiders are out of control right and to find someone that I can go to that's really reliable really professional knows what she's doing and was really courteous at the same time right anyway that's it that's it all right let's talk about the products the eyeshadows the mattes really applied really well from this little ambiance palette I like it I haven't tried the shimmers yet and I haven't even swatched them either but it's a decent little palette like grab and go this would be like a quick and easy travel palette because I can do this look over and over and over with these shades so I like it the what else did we use the foundation you know I love the foundation oh my god this moisturizer do not do not if you have oily skin and if you don't like greasy stuff just don't even okay don't even bother with it the primer i'm telling you right now that l'oreal primer yes yes and the foundation i already said the foundation and the concealer the urban decay concealer really good these aren't new products to me the blushes from armani beauty I really like them because they stay on my skin and they have fun colors. This color is a really beautiful one. Love it. Lip balm that I used initially. This one is really great. And then the Makeup by Mario one, just because I want it to be extra, is also really nice. And yeah, that's it. So there you have it. Hope you guys had fun just getting ready with me. I'm going to do a couple of other videos after this so I can have content for you guys. And, you know, I hope you guys are staying safe. I will leave all the products mentioned and used in this video down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick them up. If there is an asterisk next to any of those links, that indicates that it is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. It's an easy way to show your support for the channel because it gives me a kickback for you using my links without changing the sale price. So it's like win-win for me. If you're already purchasing the products, please consider shopping through my links. I also have YouTube shopping links. So 
YouTube has this new program now. It's an affiliate program as well where they link the products. Well, I link the products in the video and they will pop up down below, like below the video. Those are also affiliate links. So you can shop through those. I do get a commission if you shop through those links as well. So don't be apprehensive. And I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you should be following me along. We have fun over there, right? And until my next video, which hopefully will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys. Thank you